Now, I'm sure you've all seen this beast before, the Haltech Nexus VCU, the Vehicle Control Unit, the R5. That's really cool, but I, I just don't need that number of inputs, that number of outputs, and those PDM channels. It's just a little bit of overkill for my build. Well, I've got some great news for you. The Nexus R3 has landed, and it might be just what you're looking for. Much like its bigger brother, the new Nexus R3 combines the functionality of a power distribution module, a data logger, an onboard wideband controller, and a new generation state-of-the-art engine management system in one compact device. Being a smaller, more budget-friendly VCU, or again, vehicle control unit, the R3 won't have the massive number of inputs and outputs and PDM channels you get on the R5 but we'll get into the specs a little bit later on. First, let's take a look at what you get inside the box. When you purchase an R3, it's gonna turn up in this packaging, so let's open it and see what you get. The Nexus R3 VCU. We've got the Nexus R3 wiring diagrams printed out in A3. R3 quick start guide, so all the basic instructions to get you up and running. Good idea to read this before you start either planning out your wiring or starting to configure things. Definitely go through and read the instructions. Next, we've got our Shorelock connectors. Please note that the R3 does have a smaller Shorelock connector than the R5 series, so you'll see there, definitely a different size simply because the R5 PDM does have more channels and the hat can supply more current than the R3. We use these Shorelock connectors because we can't supply enough power into the AMP one millimeter connectors on the front to supply power to devices like a 25 amp thermofan or fuel pump or a trans brake solenoid or something like that. So we need these big power supplies to cope with the PDM side of this VCU. The next bit is an R3 sticker, but we've already got an R3 sticker on this unit. The reason why we supply this is because you can mount the unit upside down. That would make the sticker go upside down. So as simple as, it's a different sticker that you can choose to mount whichever direction and that'll line up all of these status lights as well. We've got our Wi-Fi antenna because we can communicate with the R3 system over Wi-Fi just like we can with the R5. We've got our Haltech page up for power key ring. We've got the USB flash drive. This has got the NSP software on it, as well as a whole bunch of resources. The software and the resources are also available off the website for free. So if you're doing a bit of research and you wanna download our software and play with the R3, R5, the Elite Series software, please download the NSP software, go to File, then New. That'll allow you to populate a, a new R5 or R3 base map and sort of explore and have a bit of a play with the system before you commit to your purchase. We've got our USB comms cable. So the R3 and the R5 series use the USB-C connector. And lastly here, we've got four bolts with washers and nylock nuts, as well as a dust cover for the USB-C connector just here. This will make mounting the R3 nice and easy. So this is what to expect when you open your R3 package, but we do have a bunch of extra things to make installation just that little bit easier. Now the first extra that we'll take a look at is the flying loom harness. It comes in this trick bag. If we crack this open, now if you're used to the Haltech platform and the Elite 1500, Elite 2500 series, we do a basic harness and a premium harness. The difference between the two being whether there's a fuse box assembly attached or not. On the R3 and R5 series, being a VCU with a built-in power distribution module, there's no need to have a fuse box assembly on the flying lead harness anymore. So essentially, they're all what we would call a basic style of loom. So we've got our connectors that go directly into the VCU. Note that we've got two 34 pin connectors on the R3 series ECU compared to the Elite 1500 and 2500 series, which had a 26 pin and a 34 pin. To make sure that you can't plug them in the wrong way around, they do have different keying. Two cutouts in the bottom of one of the connectors, whereas there's only one cutout on the other. So don't worry about trying to plug them in the wrong way around. We've got a DTP connector. So each of these pins and each of these wires is capable of 25 amps of continuous operation. So these are perfect to wire up to your, like I said before, a thermofan, a, a fuel pump, 
uh, ignition power, injector power, whatever you like. The looms are two and a half meters long and all of the wires are color coded. All the wire colors match up with what's in our IO report, makes it nice and simple to wire. They're also looped together. So we have our say eight ignition outputs here, for example, paired up with our ignition power supply. Keep in mind as well, in the front of the bag here, it's also got a neat little pocket. And inside this, it's got our quick start guide that shows us a bit about the harness, a bit about where everything's wired, a bunch of useful resources before you embark down that path of wiring your own car. If the flying harness style of install is not suitable for you, where well, you might already have a harness or you've might have made your own Tevcel harness, something like that, we'll pop that to the side and instead, you might want to use the plug and pin set. So this is a 34 pin AMP connector set. It's got two 34 pin AMP connectors. It's got all of the pins that you would crimp onto your own wiring. You might do this if you were say modifying a factory harness as well. So you might want to cut the factory plugs off a stock engine management system harness, replace them with the Haltech connectors and that's a nice and neat way to do the install as well. In that set, you can also get the DTP connector, that's the one that does the four 25 amp outputs. To make mounting just that little bit easier, we've also got these tube mount kits that are really handy if you've got a roll cage in the car. So these are available in 1.25 inches or 1.625 inch as well. So both very common roll cage diameters. One of the accessories that I expect will be super popular with the Nexus R3 series is a wideband sensor. Because the thing's got a built-in wideband controller, all we need to do is grab a sensor and wire it into the AMP connectors. Now there's two different ways to do that. You can either buy the sensor with the harness that's got the AMP pins already crimped on. So you simply push them into the AMP connector. That's gonna be super handy if you're making your own harness or if you're making an adapter harness. Or if you're using a Haltech flying loom, we actually put a Deutsch DT6 connector in those flying loom harnesses. So you don't need to pin them directly into the ECU. Instead, you just plug it in and it just works. So enough of the unboxing, let's get into the nitty gritty specs of our R3. Ideally, the R3 is gonna be running a four cylinder, a six cylinder or an eight cylinder engine, or a two, three or four rotor. And because of the built-in PDM flexibility, typically it'd be someone who wants to drive their thermo fans, their fuel pumps, that sort of stuff directly off the ECU, who doesn't already have a whole bunch of fuses and relays connected in the car. Output wise, it's got eight ignition outputs, eight peak and hold injector outputs, six digital pulsed output, one power for the ignition switch, six half bridge outputs or HBOs, four 25 amput high current outputs. Input wise, it's got 11 analog voltage inputs, two differential engine position sensors, so that's a crank and cam sensors, six synchronized pulsed inputs, two knock inputs, universal wideband control, so it's got the NTK or the LSU 4.9 controller as an input, and it's got our ignition switch input. It'll do dual drive-by-wire throttle support, the flex fuel, the closed loop OOT O2 control, knock control, up to four variable camshaft control, all of the lovely long-term learning stuff. It does onboard data logging. It's got 128 megabytes of storage. The max sample frequency is one kilohertz and the maximum number of channels per log is 300. It's got rotational idle, it's got launch control, it's got traction control, 32 by 32 by eight four dimensional fuel and ignition tables, as well as a bunch of other four dimensional tables. It's got multi-level engine protection. So comparing some of these specs, you may be noticing that the R3 and the R5 share the same software capabilities. There's no software limiting there. So all of the same functionality that's in the R5 is also in the R3. Hardware wise, the R3 has up to six stages of advanced nitrous control, 4D closed loop boost control, intake air bleed control, advanced closed loop flat shift control, shock travel and ride height inputs. It's got trans brake control, it's got all of the race timer stuff, it's got advanced torque management. This advanced torque management is one of the things that's changed the game in drag racing. We have a target engine curve and a target drive shaft curve that we can then map out in order to achieve those target curves and get that perfect pass every time. This function was reserved for the Elite 2500T and the R5 and it's now been introduced into the R3 series. 
we've got our inertial measurement sensor, which is an onboard six axis meter. It's got this four channel oscilloscope. Communications wise, it's got the two CAN bus networks that are capable of communicating at 250, 500 or 1000 kilobit per second. It's got the high speed USB 2 with the USB C interface at 480 megabits per second. It's got Wi Fi communications at up to 900 kilobit per second for data log extraction. The R3 has a built in four bar map sensor, meaning that it can measure up to 45 pounds of boost pressure. So we can see the difference in size here between the R5, the five connector ECU, and the R3, the three connector ECU. If I lift it up and have a look, we've got our Sherlock's along the top. We've got all our status and our indicator lights for the 25 amp outputs. We've got our USB-C communications. We've got our Wi-Fi antenna, the two AMP one millimeter super seal plugs that do the majority of the work. We've got our inbuilt four bar map sensor capable of measuring up to 45 pounds of boost pressure. And we've got our Deutsch DTP four connector here. That's got our four 25 amp outputs. As for connecting to the R3, well, we're gonna use our Nexus NSP platform. So that's the same software you would have been using for your Elite 550, 750, 950, uh, 1000, 1500, 2000, 2500, R5, and now the R3. So just like the R5, the R3, I can just plug it in using the USB-C connector. A little status light comes on here. That tells me that something's happening. Notice that I don't have it plugged into an ECU tester or anything like that. I'll double click. And our USB cable is powering the unit enough to get it up and running and online. Please note that having the USB cable plugged in, it powers up the communications and the data logging part. It will not output, uh, you know, injector outputs and ignition outputs and all that sort of stuff when it's powered up just off the USB cable. If we come across to our screen over here, we can see here that we're connected via and powered by a USB because that's got our little yellow warning light there. If we go to the top, we have our Nexus R3 VCU connected. Other than that, the software looks a lot like what you're already used to seeing. It's got all of our inputs, all of our outputs, all of our configurations, all of our functionality, all down the left-hand side of the page. If I go up the top and go to set up IO report, this is something that I really like looking at because I like to be able to configure all of the inputs and outputs so that they're nice and neat coming out of the harness and so they all make sense. A lot of the stuff can be set as default through the Haltec software. There's no need to have a particular input, say a coolant temperature sensor on any particular analog input. However, it is convenient to use them in the default locations that are set up on a lot of our terminated wiring harnesses or our flying lead harnesses so that the represented wire colors all match up so that down the track, if you do have to do any diagnosing on any wiring problems or anything like that, makes it nice and simple. I'll pop this page up here and we can scroll down and we can see all the inputs and outputs that are configured in this default map that's in the R3 ECU. As time goes on, more inputs and more outputs, there is more wiring, but there is more functionality and that definitely makes more fun. When you're first connecting to your R3 ECU, as long as you're using the NSP software, it'll figure out which unit you're connected to. So all of the software updates get done behind the scenes. As soon as you connect, it's gonna know whether you're connected to an R5 or an R3 or an Elite 2500. So you don't have to select anything like that. It's as simple as clicking on your connect button or if it's set up to connect automatically, away you go. Now this has been one of the most exciting product releases I've done in a long time. The R5 has been a smashing success. The Elite 2500 has been an amazing unit for a very long time, but we do know there has been a hole in the market. The R5 is an absolute monster of an engine management system, but when you don't quite need all the functionality of the R5, but you need just that little bit more than the Elite 2500 series, the R3 is revolutionizing that area of the market. With its onboard wideband controller and its PDM capability, it cleans up those custom installations so nicely where you've got no more fuses, no more relays, nice tidy installation with no more external wideband controllers. I'm so excited to see the R3 
hit the market to see everybody installing them and using them the way that, well, I'm expecting them to be used. On my end here, I've got a heap of work to do installing R3 and R5 units into our test cars and into some of our upcoming project cars. So please keep an eye on the channel. As always, my name's Scott. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, smash that like button. We put out a new video every week and sometimes even two. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content.